At Harvard's famous Sanders Theater on a recent night, an intellectual glitterati gathered to honor curious and tenacious scientific minds and some of the most bizarre yet real research out there. A mock Nobels, if you will. Harvard's medical school education dean was even on accordion. And it is Harvard after all, so there was, of course, an opera singer. Redundancy. Redundancy was, in fact, the theme for the 18th first annual Ig Nobel Awards, with the mini opera called Redundancy Again, the story of two business owners who fire everyone whose job is in any way overlapping with someone else. Tonight, though, there has to be a soprano. Well, we always fall in love with the tenor, but we go home with the baritone. And a human spotlight. So you feel comfortable with that light? Is it strong enough? Comfortable? Yeah, very comfortable. A genuine Nobel laureate, 89-year-old William Lipscomb, who won a prize for chemistry in 1976, was there and was the prize in a win a date with a Nobel laureate contest. And a former Ig winner was there. He wrote that notorious study on sword swallowing and its side effects. Most sword swallowers end up having some type of injury at one point or another, usually you scrape the throat. It's all about things that make people laugh and then make them think. A sort of patron saint of the Iggs was also there, the man who reported the first scientifically recorded case of homosexual necrophilia in the Mallard Duck. No, I was kind of surprised to see this because it was not in the, in the books I'd been studying. Reproduction was a theme. This year's chemistry Ig goes to a team for discovering that Coca-Cola is an effective spermicide. Here's the visual evidence from that study. The physics egg goes to a team that proved mathematically that heaps of string or hair or almost anything else will inevitably tangle themselves up in knots. And just because I could, I made him say that. And I'm winning the Ig Nobel Prize for studying how knots form. Mm -hmm. And what did you learn from this? Well, just a lot of obvious things. I learned about knot theory, which is a branch of mathematics. I learned a little bit, not a lot. In the experiment, we were able to identify, you know, tens of different types of knots that form. It's kind of fun to realize that there's certain ones that repeat once you actually look at your everyday life. I just want to know how my iPhone headphones end up looking like this every time I pull them out of my pocket. If you wrap it around, then it slips off somehow and pulls through, then who knows what's going to happen. Indeed, it's that sense of adventure and mystery that provokes the world's best minds to come to Harvard once a year and throw paper airplanes, mostly unbidden. Accepting the medicine prize is a man who showed that high-priced fake medicine is more effective than low-priced fake medicine. Funny, right? But what's the point? Dr. Ariali says it could teach the medical industry how to harness the power of placebo. We give people copay that are very low and we don't tell them the full price. We take generic drugs and we call them generic. All of these things are like telling you you're getting a second class something. Back to the mini opera, whenever one employee quits in this story, the entire operation grinds to a halt because no one knows anyone else's job. And so, a plug for redundancy and a veiled threat that as long as scientists need an outlet for what is normally a daily dose of dry research and scientific failure, the Ig Nobel Awards will be back again.